Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and I want to first off start by saying thank you again for another incredible week and please excuse any background noise you hear in this video we have got the air conditioning on because it is very hot and sticky in London this week. I don't know why, it just always is. I'd also like to apologize for any sort of oddities in this drop in terms of, for example, one of them, unfortunately we haven't got any lifestyle photos. A couple of others are still going to be going for service after this video, so they're not quite ready as I'll be showing you. But in the interest of time, I'm recording this on Monday and obviously this goes out Saturday, so I'm doing it far in advance. Our photographer is away for his wedding, which I will be attending over in Hungary. So there will be a period where I'm out of office office um, this week obviously the week already gone from when you're watching this I'm out of office for a day um, it's just with everything going on I need to sort of get ahead of time so therefore with the photographer being out there is one watch that hasn't unfortunately been photographed and two watches that still require a service and should be ready for the time of the drop now if they aren't we'll put a disclaimer in the description so you'll know so when you down in the comment uh, description as always you can follow the link to the website and you can see it there. For, for ease of uh, knowing which ones those are, there's the Amiga Seamaster, which may already be sold, so I do apologize. And this gorgeous Tudor, which we'll get onto. Both of those watches require a service and are going for that service as soon as this video is done. So I do apologize for some oddities this week. And again, the office is moving along nicely. Every single week I get more and more questions about it. As I said previously, the work doesn't really start until September, the 1st September. So there's not an awful lot I can do before then. I've already ordered all my office equipment. I've already got quotes for builders. I've already got design. I've already got everything, but the work can't start until the lease is completed, which is the 1st of September. So lots still to be done. Uh, we haven't even really begun, which is kind of crazy to, to think about, but it should be done by mid-September to late September so I apologize for any delays in advance but I guarantee you it's all going to be worth it and I'm telling myself that because I am exhausted and the amount of money this is costing me is insane um, but thankfully you guys and girls keep buying you keep selling you keep doing everything so please keep that up I really do appreciate it and before we dive into this more affordable drop there's only I think one watch over a thousand pounds in this drop yeah that's right so everything else under a thousand another really affordable drop the reason being the following Saturday after this we have two Moses going up a Moser Turbion and a solid red gold Moser as well um, for those of you who follow on Instagram you already know what those are but they are very, very beautiful and also incredibly expensive. So I'm doing affordable. Then that week is just those two watches. Then the week after, well, I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to have to rush the photographer getting a couple of things done to make that drop work in time. Um, but we should be all good. So before we dive in, let's have a look at what's on wrist. And again, apologies for all the background noise, but it is a gorgeous 1975 Seiko King Quartz. A watch I actually bought for myself and then I ended up putting my name down for the new Fizz, the rectangle, which I can't wait to get. So therefore, this will be coming for sale at some point soon, probably in the next few weeks. Uh, so if you are interested, do message me, but it is a really stunning uh, King Quartz blue with the texture all the way through the bracelet and the dial. It's stunning. I love it. I wish I could keep them all, but unfortunately we can't. But there we go. Without any further ado, let's begin with the watches on the table. Where shall we start? I think let's start with the vintage and work our way up. So we're going to start with this gorgeous gold plated Tudor. So here we go with the first watch we're taking a look at. This is a really, really stunning example. And I've actually had to swap a few things around because it was actually going to be a different Tudor and I picked up the wrong one, like a Muppet. So I've got two Tudors in for repair. I've got this really gorgeous one. I've got an actual uh, stunning 1965 Tudor Oyster Day Big Rose, which is the one that was supposed to be in this drop. But because I messed it up, I have swapped things around. Um, so as I said at the start of this video, this is going for service. So it's going to have a full service, deep clean, everything like that. So any muck or anything you see, please ignore and please consider this not to be the case because it will be fully serviced, as I said, and ready for sale um, very, very soon. So here we go. So this is actually a 1972 Tudor Oyster Prince Automatic Gold Plated. Specific reference is 7995, and inside is an automatic ETA caliber 2483. As you can see, you've got this really nice gold plated case. You've got this steel case back. 
you have got a later replacement gold Rolex type crown. The thing to keep in mind is obviously the yellow gold and the gold of the crown are slightly different. Unfortunately, getting the exact tone is very difficult and these crowns fade quite quickly as in they wear down. Um, obviously, this being from 1972, it's obviously had to have a crown replacement. Now, the hands and the dial are original and absolutely stunning. Look at the condition of that. Really, really gorgeous. As I said, circa 1972, it is in fantastic condition, um, and that is always the goal. Now, obviously, some of the gold plating you are going to see is showing some signs of wear and age. That is to be expected of a gold-plated watch of this age, unfortunately. And if it was in better condition, it would therefore be more money. And the cost of this is very, very fair for what you're getting. But enough of the rambling, let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my six and a three quarter inch wrist. I absolutely love how oyster cases wear so much bigger than their dimensions lead you to believe. It is 34.5 mil. It truly wears like a 36 mil in my opinion. Um, only uh, 34.5 by 40.5 lug to lug, only 11.5 mil thick and 19 mil lugs. A little bit awkward on the lug size, but at the end of the day, there are options out there and we have a few other options as well if this isn't quite to your liking. But a really gorgeous watch and incredible value for the money. Go check it out. From there, let's go to the left of that with this really stunning, really clean, really classic Amiga Seamaster. So as I said, a watch that may, or may already be sold by the time you go look at it on the website, so I do apologize if that is the case, but a really stunning, uh, 1965 Amiga Seamaster Automatic. Now again, with the Tudor, this is off for service straight after this video, so any muck or grime or anything you see, please do ignore. As I said, it will be fully clean and fully serviced by the time it comes to the website. Just again, in the interest of time, I am uh, shooting it before. Not, quite, not ideal, not something I want to do going forward, but every now and again, I think it is something I'm going to have to do. But anyway, specific reference to this one is the 165009, and beating away inside here is the automatic caliber 562, a very reliable, very good movement. The serial is a 22 million serial, which is why we date it to 1965. For those of you who don't know, you can tell the age of vintage Amigas by their serial. Um, and there's a load of points of reference out there for, you know, figuring out what they are. Now, the thing that's really nice about these is these big, thick, fat lugs, as they're often called. You've got this really nice chamfer, which is still visible. This case is overall really, really beautiful, really stunning. You can see that dial, all original, those hands, all original, black onyx. It's just a really good looking watch and I can see why it's probably going to be already sold. But let's put it on wrist, talk dimensions, because again, these Seamasters wear very similar to Oyster cases. They wear bigger than their, di their dimensions will lead you to believe. And here we go on my six and a three quarter inch wrist. There you go. It looks absolutely stunning. I love this size. 34 mil by 41.5 mil, only 10 mil thick and 18 mil lugs are so endless options, but this brown pairing always works with this watch. I almost always pair it on this. Uh, or a nice suede. I don't think you can go wrong, especially with that dial. And a lot of these I've sold, the customers end up putting them on really funky color straps and they always look good. So there's endless options. Even a mesh bracelet looks fantastic on this. So this is the perfect vintage watch for the person who wants loads of strap options. So go check this one out. It is incredibly fair price, but again, I apologize if it's already sold. As of the time of recording this video, there is however, another Seamaster available on the website, Vintage. So do check it out if you are interested. From there to an Art Deco beauty from the 1970s, uh, 1920s. Let's have a look at this majestic. Something beautiful and vintage, and if over 100 years old, as I said, 1920s, this is legally antique, which is insane. So to call something antique, it has to be over 100 years old, and this could very well be. Now you can see that beautiful Art Deco patterning throughout the case. Um, this is really, really stunning. It is a silver plated case over brass or chrome or whatever it would have been. Um, so something to keep in mind, and I have to say straight off the bat, this is nearly 100 or could be over 100 years old. Therefore, this should not be treated as an everyday watch. It's not a watch you wear going out for a run. <laughs> you might sound silly, but I have to warn people of this. This is a watch that will not keep perfect time. We've had it serviced and it is running great for its age. But again, don't expect chronometer level uh, timekeeping on a watch of this age. Also, do keep in mind it is a smaller case. So if you only like bigger watches, as beautiful as this is, it probably isn't for you. This dial is original. Those hands are original and do feature radium. Again, something to keep in mind. Not something you have to worry about personally, but something you've got to definitely keep in mind when looking at watches like this. 
But anyway, inside is a manually wound Majestic uh, Watch Co signed movement. As I said, 1920s, really beautiful condition. We've got it paired on this nice brown strap. Um, yeah, there's not really an awful lot to say other than, you know, this is a specific kind of watch for a specific kind of collector. And that is what I love about these. I've owned 1920s Art Deco watches in the past, and I will likely continue to own them in the personal collection going forward. I think they're fantastic and incredible value for money. It might surprise you how affordable this is. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go. So as I said, a smaller watch. Now, I do know many guys who wear watches this small, and they absolutely rock it. At the end of the day, wear what you like. If if you think this is going to be too small for you, then don't wear it. Um, so 27mm by 35mm lug to lug, only 9mm thick and 14mm lugs. You can see we've got it paired on this really nice strap, it looks fantastic. It's a really gorgeous watch, but as I said, will be too small for some of you out there. And for others, that will be what's drawing you to it. So go check it out. Now on to a real oddball with a Seiko made out of tungsten carbide. Let's have a look. And next up, we have a really interesting Seiko Quartz Dolce. And I apologize if I've absolutely butchered that pronunciation, but a really, really interesting and awesome watch. Um, nicknamed the tank, and you can see why, obviously, the uh, tank style case. But interestingly, this is a tungsten carbide case. Really interesting material, incredibly robust and hard, and it gives this really interesting sort of bronzy, goldy color. It's really, really unique. Nothing quite like it. You can see the dial has got that beautiful gold champagne color with that really beautiful texture as well. All original, uh, is on a replacement strap, obviously gold-plated buckle, but a really, really interesting watch. It is from 1982, and the specific reference for this is 5931-5260, which means the movement inside is a Seiko Quartz Calibre 5931. Now, based on the reference and the serial, we can actually date it to January 1982. So a real great option for someone who wants a birth year watch uh, and something a bit more different and unique, but also incredibly affordable. So go check this one out and let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my six and a three quarter inch wrist. You can see it wears beautifully and super thin to the wrist at 29 mil by 36.5 mil, only 5.8 mil thick and 18 mil lugs. Really beautiful size and dimensions and a great looking watch for the price. Go check it out. Let's keep going this way. Let's go on to the Christopher Ward. Christopher Ward are doing fantastic things for the money. And I think where you can get them pre-owned, I definitely recommend it. The reason being, you're gonna save yourself a fair bit of money on retail. So this is 895 brand new, I believe. Sorry, I was just moving the bezel background. And when you see the price, we've got this priced at, you're gonna be very surprised, a very, very good value. Especially when you consider this is a chronometer movement watch swiss made and everything i mean where else are you going to get a watch that has this kind of spec for this kind of price i just don't think you are but anyway this is the christopher ward c65 dartmouth uh 41 mil blue inside here is an automatic solita sw200 chronometer uh which means it's tested to a much higher accuracy and uh it's just overall a higher grade movement you can see beautiful matte blue dial blue bezel you've got those really interesting luminous hands these very very bold luminous indices a crown right here with a blue inlay really really nice it isn't screwed down that's something to keep in mind um, and you can see this strap is paired on with the bright orange now at the end of the day if you're not a fan of the orange don't worry thanks to its very very easy 22 mil lug width you can pair it on pretty much any strap choice you can imagine uh, and again this is a watch that looks great on a mesh and quick release which makes it super super easy you can see the case back there just a really really good watch and really really reliable you can actually see it is for the royal navy um, all stated right there, which is really nice to see. But let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my six and a three quarter inch wrist, a lot bigger than those vintage watches we were just looking at. Now, I forgot to say, this is from May 2020, and it does come with its full box and paperwork, so you're getting yourself a really good deal. It's 41 mil by 47 mil lug to lug, only 11.5 mil thick and 22 mil lugs, as I said. Really good looking watch for the price and a very, very good watch on the spec sheet as well. So go check it out. From there to a watch with an awesome name, the Bull Fireman Nightbreaker. What a name, let's have a look. 
Next up is a watch and a brand you do not see every day, and that is Ball. Ball are a very old brand that were actually the railway standard for the American railways, and I believe they still are to today. I could be wrong, but there you go. You can see they've obviously got a train on the back. But this watch is the Fireman Nightbreaker Blue, as it's called, which is a hell of a name. You can see really gorgeous details on the dial. You've got that sort of record dial with concentric circles, bold two, 12, 4, and 8 the date over there vibrant red second hand really interesting loom it's not going to be for everyone this design but that's what makes it really really interesting you can see uh, down there at 12 you can see down there at 12 t swiss t and that's because these are tritium tubes as you can see in the indices in the hands and even the second hand right there which is really interesting screw down sign crown at three o'clock close case back and beating away inside this watch is the automatic ball rr1103 this watch is from november 2017 it does come with its full box and paperwork the bracelet is sized to a six and a three quarter inch wrist so my size wrist and unfortunately comes with no extra links now links may be able to be sourced from ball directly but they're not something i will have lying around unfortunately so that's something to keep in mind if you have a bigger wrist thankfully though with its 20 mil lug width you could put it on any strap you see fit and it would look fantastic recommend nice blue leather but anyway let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go perfectly fitted to my wrist that's really really comfortable this is 40 mil by 48.5 mil only 12 mil thick and 20 mil lugs as i said a really good looking watch for the money and when you see the price you will be surprised especially when you consider what retail is so you're saving yourself a nice chunk of change on retail which is always the goal with pre-owned and at the end of the day this is very lightly worn there's no serious wear at all so you're getting yourself a really good deal from there to the golden turtle let's have a look if you know me you know i love the seiko turtle and i've owned pretty much every variant there is i had 12 turtles at one point including the original 6309 and i love them and i wish i didn't sell the originals but this is the super gold um, often called the golden turtle the seiko prospects srpc 44 now this one is from september 2017 it does come with its box and unsigned papers so the papers are in there but unsigned um, and it's just a really really good looking watch inside is the automatic seiko caliber 4r36 hacking hand winding hacking all the good stuff does come on its original strap with the gold uh, pin and buckle and the tongue as well it's just a really good looking watch. Yes, it is a lot of gold, but for someone who likes that sort of look, this is perfect. And you can actually get an aftermarket all gold um, Jubilee band. I'm sure there's more options, but the Jubilee looks fantastic. And I did own this watch and I did have that. And it was a bold look, I've got to be honest. It's not something I wore out often, but it really is a cool looking watch, especially for someone who likes to sort of collect Seikos and collect turtles. You've got to have this one at least once, and I'm glad I did. But let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And and here we are on my six and a three quarter inch wrist. You can see the yellow gold does sort of clash against my skin color quite a bit in all honesty, but you know what, I would totally wear it. Now, if you've worn a Seiko Turtle, you will know they don't wear like the dimensions lead you to believe. They wear so, so well, and Seiko have nailed the case size. It's 45 mil by 47 mil lug to lug. So again, under that 50 mil lug to lug. So it wears wide, but it's short. Only 13 mil thick and 22 mil lugs. A really good looking watch wears beautifully and is definitely different from the usual stuff you see. So go check it out and it is a bargain. From all gold to all black with the Ninja Turtle, let's have a closer look. And another one I have owned and sold countless times, all the way from back when they were £350 in the secondary market to where they are today, and it seems to just be growing. So if you are wanting one and would like to add one to the collection, I would recommend not waiting around, because yes, you may find a bargain here and there every now and again, but for the most part, these are definitely going up. Now, this is a limited edition, often nicknamed the Ninja Turtle because of the all black design. Now this is specifically the SRPC 49, so the Seiko Prospects Turtle. This is from March 2018, it does come with its full box and papers and as you can see it is all black coated, same with the pin and buckle and the tong as you'd expect. This is a worn example but there's no real signs of wear which is good to see. I have seen these absolutely battered, which I don't really know how because I had one and worn it regularly and it barely got any wear to be honest with you. Now, beating away inside here, same as the other one is the automatic Seiko Calibre 4R36 and dimensions are exactly the same. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. 
And here we go. This is such a good looking watch. If you're looking for an all black watch, I would highly recommend this watch because it's still an incredible value. And as I said, they seem to be going up quite consistently year on year. So again, 45 mil by 47 mil lug to lug, only 13 mil thick and 22 mil lugs. Hell of a lot of watch for the money and Seiko are just fantastic. And if you haven't explored the turtle range, you definitely need to. And last but certainly not least, let's have a look at the baby Marine Master, as it's called. There's always a nickname for a Seiko, and this is the Baby Marine Master, as I said. Now, it's a Seiko Prospect still, and the specific reference is the SRPB077. This specific one is from January 2019. It does come with its full box and papers, as you'd expect. And being away inside this one is the automatic Seiko Caliber 6R15. Again, a very reliable movement. It does hack hand wind and all the bells and whistles you'd expect. You can see you've got date over there you've got a really nice ceramic bezel so this is a this is a definite upgrade from the usual Seikos you see you've got a really well machined Seiko bracelet again a definite upgrade from what you usually see with a milled out clasp yes the actual clasp part is still a stamped piece of metal but the actual uh, bars in between are milled metal which is nice to see a very reliable feeling clasp and again the bracelet is very very good for a Seiko which you do not hear often at all nice screw down crown down there at four really nice hands really simple dial really clean aesthetic and just a hell of a lot of watch for the money really good looking really easy to wear and as i said just great value but anyway let's put it on wrist talk dimensions because again this wears super well for the size and here we go on my six and a three quarter inch wrist if you're looking for a black face black bezel diver and you don't want to spend a huge amount of money and you want something still really really good really reliable this is a great option 43.5 mil by 50 mil lug to lug right on that perfect lug to lug length i always go on about only 13 mil thick and again 20 mil lugs are endless options this is definitely one to keep an eye out if you like this kind of design and again a seiko you have to try out at some point i really do believe that because it will surprise you how good it is so go check it out so there you have it guys and girls this week's drop i really do hope you enjoyed some real beauties on the table some very affordable some not so much some rare some everything in between it's what we do here at kibble watches and as always make sure you check out the other author offering we have on the website kibblewatches.co.uk there is something for everyone i guarantee you and if you are looking for a specific watch do get in contact now i do want to say as of the time we're watching this video saturday the sunday the day after <laughs> you're watching this is my birthday so i do apologize if i am quite quiet and the monday is a bank holiday here in the uk so again i won't be able to make it into the office i will be catching up with the emails and messages from the weekend um maybe a little bit hungover but we'll see um but yeah i just wanted to get that out there before you guys expect responses on sunday which i usually do so i do apologize and then that following week is the week i think i fly to hungary I'm very much not aware of what's going on right now. I'm focusing on too many things at once. But um, I do apologize for any delays. Do get your orders in because on that Tuesday, I can get them sent out. And I believe the Wednesday and I believe I, I fly Thursday. So get your orders in, get your messages in, get your emails in because I can respond and get things sorted before I go. And then there will be a time where I can't ship things out. So do keep that in mind. But either way, you guys and girls have been epic so far and I'm sure, you, I'm sure you're going to carry on being that way and really understanding and I do seriously appreciate the support. So thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you all again next time.